Hey, in fact, uh, now it's uh, on to a, a pretty cool segment. We actually have what we call our, our, our Twitter up or our email uh, segment where we're going to take uh, your questions. And we have another uh, expert that's joined us to my right. We have Ashley Edwards, who is a PAO officer with the Exploration Systems Mission Director at NASA headquarters. And welcome, Ashley. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm glad you had a chance to uh, come, and come by and talk with us and answer some questions. And uh, we'll see what we have uh, from the audience. So let's see. Let's go. J uh, Jackie, what's the first question? What do we the have? The first question, let's see. What happens if the Aries 1X blows up? Wow. Well, if the Aries 1X <laughs> blows up, we'll be very, very busy. <laughs> um, of course, we don't expect that to happen. Uh, we wouldn't be launching it if we weren't absolutely confident that it was ready to go. We've tested and verified every system. However, it is a test, and it, we can expect some things to happen that are unexpected. Um, I'm pretty sure we won't see anything blow up today, though. And that's an important part, you know, when you try to tell the public, and as engineers, some things, they don't, they don't work the first time, every single time. That's why you have, sort of, you have trial and error, and you, and you have iterations, and you redesign, and you retest. And, so it's an, it's an important step in the engineering process. Isn't That's it? absolutely right. Well, and one thing about tests, especially the tests, is you learn from your mistakes. I mean, right. sometimes a good failure will teach you way more than a than a absolutely. you know absolutely perfect uh, test. So we got to keep that in mind as we go forward. With this this is the first test in 30 years of a new right. vehicle. So this is very exciting. Well, speaking about testing, uh, we have uh, another question. You know, with, with rumors of Aries going away, mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's a big uh, talk right now, why are we testing Aries in one extent? Well, it, it's, it's no secret that the program is under consideration and under review right now. With right. The, uh, but whether or not, what, whatever the forward path is, this test is incredibly important. On that rocket behind me are 700 sensors that are going to verify. A lot of, a lot of data. Yeah, oh, all <laughs> that data. Her data. It's going to absolutely verify all of the modeling and simulation software that they use to design this vehicle. So it, it's going to help us hone in our, our models and simulations, and, and it's going to be valuable no matter what. All right, that's cool. Now, um, this Ares 1X, as we were talking about before, is made up of many pieces. Mm and a lot of those pieces were built at different NASA centers and different yeah. facilities across the country. Can you kind of explain how everyone sort of kind of came together to, to build the rocket and who's, who's involved? Well, it's a huge feat in systems engineering to have piece parts built all across the country. Um, certainly, uh, we've got Alabama Marshall Space Flight Center has been involved, Langley Research Center has been involved. Of course, everything was put together here at, in Florida, but it wasn't necessarily built here. I don't know, can you give Glenn me Glenn Research Center? Research Center. Yep, they built the upper stage. Yep. 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 The, the, I'm sorry, the other interesting part is that they actually arrived to KSC in different ways. They used several different what are the different ways? That's air? right. So, so yeah. So this, um, the very tip of the rocket arrived on an airplane, mm -hmm. um, the back of a really big airplane, and then the um, the middle segment that we called the tuna cans, the upper stage, actually arrived by barge, I believe. The tuna cans. The tuna cans. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get, you can probably figure out why they're called the tuna cans. Imagine slices. They they just looked like ginormous tuna cans. <laughs> it's a lot of tuna. I actually so have yeah. a little bit of trivia about those. Okay. They're they're 18 feet in diameter, I understand, but they're nine and a half feet tall. And the question is, why are they nine and a half feet tall? The answer is because they were on barge, they needed to be able to go under the tunnels, and they're nine and a half feet clearance. So, oh, you know, that's I one of our design <laughs> influences is, is barges and tunnels. Well, yeah. I know, like, like I said, from Langley, we you know, we were responsible for the uh, the launch abort system and the crew yep. module, and right. that was shipped through by, by airplane right. down, down to Kennedy. Planes, trains, and automobiles. And there, there you go. <laughs> that's right. Huge feat in logistics. And, uh, now, right maybe. behind us, I believe, we have, it says four minutes, we have a hold. And yeah. what generally, what does that mean in t for a typical launch when we have a hold? Well, that's just the point where they check out everything one last time before we proceed. Um, in space shuttle launches, there are several holds along the way. With this Ares 1X, the, there is only one hold. Okay. Um, it's four minutes, and then we'll keep that hold until we're ready to go. Okay. So, um, for more information and, and uh, the most recent status, you just need to look at the Ares 1X launch blog, which is on the www.nasa.gov Ares 1X page, and you can get the most recent information about where we are. If, the, if the launch gets delayed, how long is that delay? There's a window, I think, of... Right. The window is four hours. We have we have the availability to launch any time between 8 a.m. and 12 a.m., well, 12 this, to today, four hours long. And if for some reason the weather doesn't cooperate, then we'll do it again tomorrow, and we'll get it off then. Well, I think uh, let's let's take a break from the questions, and let's go to Franklin. I think he has another fan video over at the turn base. Great. Franklin, what's going on?
So I understand you're here uh, to see the Aries 1X launch, and this is your first launch. How do you feel? Oh, it's pretty amazing. The weather is going to be great, and the rocket is going to be awesome. Um, how, how, what do you think this means for the, uh, the future of NASA, uh, going back to the moon? Oh, no, I understand this is a pretty important milestone for you guys, and, and I wish that uh, the rocket and everything they, they gather today can help you guys out to go to the next step. What does it mean for you to be out here today to see the launch of Ares 1X? Well, uh, since I work here, uh, it's definitely a big um, milestone for us, and uh, I'm really looking for a successful flight, and uh, it's it's going to prove that um, you know this new Ares vehicle is going to be able to go ahead and uh, one one day uh, bring uh, humans um, back into space and uh, take over what the shuttle's been doing for so many years. And Ashley, I knew you had to take off soon. You're, you're it's very busy. It's, it's your your, your schedule is pretty hectic today. But we, we want to thank you for coming by and sharing a few minutes. But before you go, just one more question that you have to answer. And maybe you two can tag team on this. <laughs> and this is, this is an interesting question. This is uh, from Robert Perlman. And his question is, uh, what is the connection between Aries 1-X and the Hubble Space Telescope? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what my um, answer is. <laughs> would you like to go first? <laughs> I think the connection is exploration. Exactly. So Hubble is all about figuring out the origins of the universe and, and just wondering what's out, what else is out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in a way, Ares 1X is giving rise to the next you know, human space transportation system, and its purpose is exactly the same thing. It's to help us explore. I couldn't answer it better. <laughs> uh, there you, I think you're free to go now. Thank you, well, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. It's hey. been a pleasure. Hey, let's, uh, if we have another video, let's go to another video, and we'll be back uh, in a few seconds. Where do you see NASA going in the next 50 years? Uh, in the next 50 years, I see us getting back to the moon, uh, putting people on the moon again. Um, also, I hope to see that we put people on Mars uh, for the first time ever. Um, and in a broader spectrum, not necessarily destination, but I'd like to see us inspire our youth to once again become the leader in education in the science and technology realm. This is your first launch. Uh, how does it feel to be out here today? I'm excited. I can't wait, but it sounds like it's delayed for a few minutes. So does the delay get you all anxious? Uh, well, since I've been up since 4.30 this morning, yeah, it's a little bit longer to wait, but no, I'm still looking forward to it. Can't wait. What do you expect to see this morning? A lot of bright lights and that rocket going up into space. <laughs> well, we have about eight minutes to launch, uh, but I, I think it, uh, theoretically, theoretically, but I think at this point we might be on, on a hold. We don't know the exact time yet, but we're hoping that it's going to launch in less than eight minutes. Uh, before we get to another fan video, just want to let you know that you can uh, download a NASA Edge vodcast at www.nasa.gov/nasaedge. You can send an email question to NASA Learn at gmail.com or if you're on Twitter look us up at NASA underscore edge and uh, send in a tweet and we'll uh, hopefully Jill can answer your question. Yeah, we have a team working on it constantly to get those questions to us. Hey we just got an update uh, the, it looks like the estimated launch time now for Aries 1X is 8.29 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 8.29 so uh, looks like we're not going to be launching on time. <laughs> Which I know we're, we're, we're probably all a little disappointed because we want to see a, an on-time launch but Things happen. It's it's not the rocket. It's the weather. So, hey, just seconds ago, the four minute hold and the clock is now counting down. Woo. We're at three oh. minutes and forty seven seconds to launch. I've never seen that before, other than on TV. It's amazing. And it's amazing. Everybody around the press site, all of a sudden, is just flocking out of the buildings and coming out to the uh, a flurry of activity. They're all coming the out with their area. cameras ready the to go. The enthusiasm is palpable. <laughs> People are getting their cell phone cameras That's out. That's a big word. Yeah, they got a good video word. cameras. Wow. They're, they're all ready to go. And, You're getting and nervous now again. Yeah, Look at that. Well, it is, it is a big deal because at, the, at this point, uh, we are moving and we will have a launch. I mean, barring anything significant, but we're in the, we're in the window now. Oh, wait a minute. We have a, we have a hold. Oh. At 239, there is a hold. Well, that's good because we got more people to thank. <laughs> I feel like we need the set therapist on the set because this has been a very emotional... I mean, it's a roller coaster, I and mean, poor Jill. I mean, you, you know, you're here at the at the pinnacle of your career and, and accomplishment, and it's going, it's not going, it's going, it's not going. Yeah. So, yeah, so it happens. If you need to step away and like punch somebody, if you know, I don't know who that would be. Are you volunteering? But, no, I will. Oh, okay. If, right. I would Anything do that for, for the you. team. I'd take one for the team to be sure. The NASA team. The clock now has reset to four minutes and five seconds, so maybe uh, the, the the clock might start counting down soon. We just don't know. Maybe that, did the clock go? We're, oh, the, oh, yay. 
Yep, We're rolling. Oh, okay. the clock is back to four minutes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, this is worse than my high school dating career. <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about that yeah. sad, sad part of your life. Let's focus on, <laughs> on, on the mission. Well, I mean. And, and now with, with, you can see that the clouds are kind of rolling in uh, near the pads. And maybe uh, not only it's, it's the, the ship that apparently has been in the zone, uh, the, the landing zone, but maybe this triboelectrification now might be a factor because the clouds are moving in again. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, yeah. we just got an update. There is clear weather 15 minutes away. All right. <laughs> For 15 minutes. Oh, there's clear weather for 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So 15 minutes away. 15, 15 minutes away, away so and a 15, 15, 15 minute window. 15, yeah. <laughs> so right. if you have a box of 15 here <laughs> and a box of 15 here, this is the bad weather box of 15. Yes. And then you have a good weather box right here. You gotta have your boxes. So you gotta have your boxes straight. That's right. Up and down, <laughs> up and down. And so. Uh, Actually, it hasn't gone up at all. Oh, oh wow. Oh, you she's know, quick. No. <laughs> she's well. Let's have some confidence here. So. We do still have a possibility. That yeah. It's true. No, I have open. faith. Uh, we had a Twitter from uh, somebody at NASA uh, headquarters that said that uh, after this launch, they want their tribal electrification t shirt. <laughs> yeah, so there's an opportunity so, out there for somebody. Oh, oh, now we got word. See, the word is changing by the second. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. And so who's na- bringing it to you, NASA Edge? That's right, yeah. NASA Edge Live, right? And so, uh, it's getting it schizophrenically here. The, count, the, the countdown now will be starting at 11.10. Do you know how we are about info? The info is changing <laughs> all the time. Now we just found out that the info has been changing. The, um, the, the clock will start at 11.20 now, not 11.15. Wow. You know, I, I know that it's it's not something that we should bring up, but I wonder what the odds are in Vegas at this point on the launch. Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. And a somber move, though still live, we do have to postpone till tomorrow. Yes, uh, mission's been scrubbed uh, until tomorrow at 8 a.m. You're looking live at the Ares 1X rocket on pad 39B at NASA Kennedy Space Center. You're watching NASA Edge. Welcome back for the uh, 15th time, maybe? 16th time? <laughs> You're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. And we're really glad that we can actually uh, come here today and actually, well, I can't claim anything because we have no idea whether we're actually going to see the launch, but we're going to try for the umpteenth time. The word of the day that hopefully will not be in the way That's during true. those four minutes. Triboelectrification. Absolutely. Yes. It took and, me a little bit to say that. And and f- <laughs> in fact, many versions of that word are running around Twitter right now because uh, we've been asking for people to give definitions of that word or variations of that word. Of the word tribo, with, you know, and I think my favorite so far was tribo deleification. Anyone want to take a shot at defining triboelectrification? Go ahead. <laughs> well, that's why I asked, because I didn't want to be the one to have to try to define it. No, I, it, the, the Greek uh, tribo is actually has to do with friction. That's right. And, and actually, tribology is a study of friction. A, one aspect of it is the study of friction. Right. And it all has to do with uh, particle electro, electrostatic particles uh, charging and discharging onto the rocket, causing damage with the uh, sensors. And just want to let you know, uh, we have our SME who's not with us again, Jill yes. Marlowe from NASA Langley Research Center, who was with us yesterday. Okay, Jill, uh, what has happened uh, since yesterday morning when you were on the air with the guys? Oh, wow. Well, I got to eat lunch with some of the folks in the uh, that were back in the hangar AE, which is the support to the firing room, and I got to hear all the chatter that was happening back there. That was exciting. A lot of dialogue about winds and the loads that were happening, a lot of dialogue about that ship, as you can imagine. And now we're going to launch a rocket today. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, she was pretty confident in the launch today. She actually checked out of her hotel. So she was bold in that's her right. prediction. I mean, she didn't place bets or anything, but, but that's kind of placing a bet. She that's was hoping, definitely. She was ready bets, for yes. it yesterday, and I think all of us were, and now we're, we're just at the brink, hopefully, of seeing the Aries 1X rocket launch. Hey, just got word uh, at 11.30 oh. a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we have a 10-minute window. Oh, wait, we're, we have green for launch. Uh, what time is that? All right, we are back live. We are waiting for the countdown. Actually, it's been changed. It, they're about ready to, uh, hopefully, within the next, uh, okay, we have about 15 seconds. It's going to start. Wow. I'm nervous. 
I am starting to get this nervous. Is kind this of is, this is actually going to happen. Yeah. We've gotten to this point so many times before, it's hard to know where to go. There he goes. It has started. Wow. The clock Less than four has minutes. There we go. Less than four minutes. So Tribo electrification is not this. an issue anymore. Yes. Theoretically. I mean, you know, it's still it's still out there. All right, we have less than a uh, minute and a half. I bet you Jill is just crying. Yeah. <laughs> off of the ground computers to the Ares 1X flight yes, computer sir. has occurred. We have Blair taking pictures of the launch. I can't keep it steady. I'm so. I'm you so said nervous. T minus one minute. T minus one minute. We're one minute away. Sound suppression water system now armed. The solid rocket booster joint heaters are being turned off. Wow. Jackie, enjoy your first launch. Thank you. Sound yeah. suppression system engaged. And we're now go inertial. The navigation system is activated. 30 seconds. Wow. This is Jerry it. Power hey, make sure you get started. the right pad. It's not pad 39A, <laughs> it's 39B. I got it covered. Solid rocket motor nozzle gimbal checks are underway. Ignition system is armed. Sound suppression water system is activated. Up. Oh, 10 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Liftoff of Ares 1X. Testing concepts for the future wow. of new rocket Look at that design. Go. Wow. Go, Ares. 